Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Your host for another spine-tingling voyage into the depths of the unknown, the uncharted. In fact, in this story, we're going to the depths of the sea, to the uncharted depths never explored before by man, except one man. David Wells, who entered a kingdom and a world so strange, so fascinating and terrifying, it defies the imagination. For the kingdom of the sea is all-encompassing. The boundaries of the beaches don't necessarily keep the power of the sea from exerting its influence into any life that has touched it. David Wells learned that the hard way. David, what's the matter? It's Napoleon. He's fighting with someone. I'm going to find out. I'm coming with you. I read, Napoleon. I can help. <gasps> Napoleon. <gasps> He's dead, David. Gone apart. Who could have done this? Why? He's soaking wet. Napoleon. Oh, I wouldn't touch him. Uh, Mrs. MacArthur, look here. On his fur. Oh, those white flakes. Yes. They're fish scales. His fur smells of salt water. Salt water, David? In the middle of Texas? Our mystery drama, Child of the Sea, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars Tony Roberts. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. If God had wanted us to swim, he'd have given us fins and gills. A caution, perhaps, that man functions best in his own environment. But man has always yearned to venture forth, defying nature, determined to overcome the barriers that separate the elements. David Wells is just such a man. Heir to a Texas oil fortune, David shuns big business and instead prefers the high mountains, the ski trails, the open road. The mysterious ocean is David's fancy of the moment as we meet him in the waters off Laguna Beach, California, surfing and scuba diving. I was a hundred yards offshore. The water was clearer than I'd ever seen it. Graceful fish swam up to me, their curious mouths speaking silently and then darting off in fear. Suddenly, I spotted a strange formation at the ocean floor. I swam closer to investigate, and then... It lunged and grabbed my arm before I knew what would happen. It was a squid. Huge. A tentacle wrapped around my air tank. My air supply was cutting off. I fought desperately. My lungs were bursting. I was blacking out. Then, I saw swimming around us a huge fish. I couldn't tell what it was. But through the haze of pain, I saw it was a girl, not a fish, but a girl attacking the squid that held me. My air was gone, and the last thing I saw was the girl's long, flowing hair. And then I blacked out completely. Are you all right now? Uh, I... <coughs> I thought I was finished. You might have been... I can't believe you got me away from that thing. Well, I've had experience with squid and others. How do I say thanks? You've already said it. I guess you ought to know who you saved. I'm David Wells. David. And I'm Alana. Alana. That's pretty. Sounds uh, Hawaiian. It isn't. Have you lived here long? I don't really live here. 
I'm staying at my aunt's beach house. My home's in Texas. Texas? I don't know where that is. It's about a thousand miles from here. Inland. But how about you? Have you lived here long? I've never lived anywhere else. Where's your house? Oh. Uh, up on the hill? Maybe we're neighbors. No. I don't live on the hill. Well, where then? I may want to write you a thank you note. Oh, you don't have to. I live here at the ocean with my father. Yes, well, I want to thank him, too, for having such a lovely daughter. Thank you. I must go now. You can't. I must. Well, I'll, I'll see you home. No. You must rest and I must go. I'll see you again. Al- Alane. She ran off down the beach. And suddenly she was gone, as though she'd vanished into thin air. And I dragged myself to my feet, and I headed for the house. David, you look awful. What happened? I was attacked by a squid. A squid? Yes, it got my air tanks. But uh, a girl saved me. She swam up just as I was blacking out. A girl fought off a squid? Yes, it's unbelievable, I know. Oh. I think you're crazy to go galloping around the ocean floor. That thing was a killer. These risks you take could be awfully bad for your health. To say nothing of your father's nervous system. Well, he ought to be used to it by now. Oh, he'll never get used to his only son and heir risking his neck. Dad will never get me behind a desk at Wells Industries. I may be his heir, but I'll be an absentee president. Oh, speaking of heirs, there's a letter from Ellen. Oh, damn Can't she leave me alone for a minute? Not when there's an alliance with Wells Industries at stake. I knew I was destined to see Alan again. I spent the next several days walking the coves and rocks of Laguna, waiting. And then the third day, as I approached the beach, there she was. Hello. I've been looking for you. I know. I had to wait for a chance to get away. From your father? Yes. He doesn't like me to spend too much time alone on the beach. But you live here. Why wouldn't you spend time on the beach? No, it's too hard to explain. Tell me, how are you feeling? Oh, fine. The hot bath and I was as good as ever, thanks to you. I still owe you my life. I'm glad I was there. It really wasn't an accident. I've been watching you for more than a week. You have? I saw you swimming along the bottom one day. You picked up an abalone. Well, the day after I got here. Yes, I remember. You mean you were underwater? Of course. Well, why didn't I see you? I didn't want you to. Oh, but I've watched you many days. That's how I happened to be there when the squid attacked you. You swim without gear? Yes. I learned how to stay underwater when I was very young. You only mentioned your father. Is your mother living? I never knew my mother. Neither did I. I was uh, raised by a nurse and uh, a tutor. Oh, what are they? You don't know what a tutor is? Not exactly. Hey, where'd you go to school? You didn't know where Texas is, either. My father was my only teacher. What did you do in uh, Texas, David? Hmm, As little as possible. I'm usually skipping around the world trying to keep from dying of boredom. But you're so attractive. I think you'd have lots of friends, lots of excitement. And I have lots of acquaintances, but uh, no friends. Except one, maybe. My Aunt Lou. Your aunt? Yes, she's my father's sister, but she's been the best friend I've ever had. (laughs) Strange to think of a relative as a friend. (laughs) Not when you meet Aunt Lou. And you will, Alan Ant. I'd like to invite you to the house for dinner. Your father, too. Oh, that would be impossible. Oh, why? My father would never let me come. Oh, well, he's invited, too. Oh, but that would be even more impossible. We couldn't come, ever. I don't see why. We can only meet here on the beach, David. I can't enter your world. What do you know of uh, my world? (laughs) Enough to know that a few pleasant moments are all we can have together. Well, that can change. I want to see you here every day. I can be here. We'll swim together. Oh, I will show you many beautiful things. 
After that, we met every day and swam through fantastic underwater gardens I never knew existed. Alan A. could stay under for 10 to 15 minutes at a time without any gear. And it was then that I knew Alan A. was no ordinary girl. David, why don't you try swimming without those tanks? I can show you how to breathe underwater. I believe you can. <laughs> I can't enter your world. But maybe you can be part of mine. What is your world? Well, the sea. Isn't it obvious? I'm not sure I want to believe what I'm thinking. Come, let's swim. I'll teach you how to breathe. Leave your tanks here. We dived into the water and I followed the instructions Alan had given me. And for two minutes, I actually breathed underwater. But then my lungs filled with water. I struggled to the surface, my lungs bursting. I'll help you to shore, David. You'll be all right. Stick to the tank. I'm not ready for this. You've had more practice than I have. Oh, but you did fine for the first time. No, I mean, I'm Oh, you'll learn. It's important to me. Why? Why should it be important? You'll know someday. You'll learn. There was something about the way she looked when she said it. Something in her voice that made me know that somehow my destiny was wrapped up in this beautiful girl. And one day... David, I'd like to meet your Aunt Lou. I can come tonight if you like. I'm delighted to meet you, Alan A. David talks of nothing else but your days together. Thank you. And, of course, we're grateful to you. I'd hoped to meet you long before this. <laughs> Alan is the shy type, I'm afraid, Aunt Lou. My father finally said it would be all right. Oh, we're delighted. That's a very unusual dress. Did you get it in the village? I wove it myself from seaweed. Really? What a sensation that would make at the Glenwood Country Club. <laughs> You're not serious, Aunt Lou. Oh, could you make me one? I'll pay you anything you want. Of course. I'd be happy to. Well, I'll hold you to that. Now, you two go out on the terrace. I'll look after the dinner. Do I really look all right, David? I've never been up in the town before. Oh, of course you do. You're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. Oh, David, don't say things that... I mean it. Alame, I'm in love with you. Oh, David. I've loved you from the first time I saw you. But I knew it was impossible. And then I found a way. I found a way for us to be together. But why was that so much of a problem? Because of my father. I told you I couldn't live in your world. Well, you can if it's what... Oh, good Lord. Ellen. Oh, I just drove down from L.A., David. You were expecting me, weren't you? Ellen, what are you doing here? I told you I was coming. You did get my letter, didn't you? Your the letter? Um... Oh, you didn't even open it. But here I am. And none too soon, it seems. Why don't you introduce me to your friend? Oh, we haven't met. The evening was uncomfortable, to say the least. Alan A. left immediately after dinner, and Ellen spent the rest of the evening trying to find out who she was and whether to consider her a rival. I didn't tell Ellen how I felt about Alan A. As the days passed, Ellen never left my side, and not surprisingly, Alan A. was never on the beach. One afternoon, while Ellen napped and Aunt Lou worked on a macrame, I slipped down to the beach. As I stood looking out at the sparkling sea, I saw a shape moving far out in the water. A porpoise, perhaps. It was a huge fish of some sort. It swam with terrific speed. And as it came closer, I suddenly saw long, blonde, flowing hair. Alanae was swimming toward me, undulating her body like a fish. She came sweeping in on a giant break and She wasn't with you today. That's why I came. Yes, but where have you been? I've looked for you every day. How could I come to you with her around? She's yours, your world. 
Oh, but David, if you love me, really love me, there's a chance you can live in my world. Where is that? You won't tell me. I'll take you there now, today. My father said he would meet you. Oh, please, David. Yes. Yes, of course. I'll come. Then hurry. Get your breathing things. Those, those tanks. My tanks? Why? Because we are going to meet my father. It's not every young suitor who goes to meet his prospective father-in-law wearing scuba gear. But then there aren't many young men who fall in love with such a lovely yet mysterious girl. If you're as anxious as I am to meet Alonay's father, stay right here. I'll be back shortly. Welcome back to the beach at Laguna. In the warm sun and the soft sea air, it's hard to imagine or feel anything unusual. Hard to think that Alane is anything but an attractive young girl. But as we promised, we're all going to meet her father, an event for which David Wells has gone back to the house for his air tanks. You won't need them, though. Come along and let's join David and Alane as they prepare to meet Alane's father. Don't be alarmed, David. Yes, but where are we going? Why do I need my tanks? It's a long swim to my father's home. You haven't learned yet how to stay underwater without them. That will come in time. We swam deeper than we ever had before. I followed down through the coral, deeper and deeper until there shouldn't have been any sunlight. But as we swam easily along the ocean floor, the light seemed to get brighter. I was completely spellbound. I forgot everything except the fantastic beauty around me. Two large gates loomed in front of us. They swung open as Alane approached. And we swam down a pearl-covered corridor, which opened into a magnificent underwater room. Reclining on a bed of coal was a merman. Half man, half fish. He was ageless, stern, menacing. Alane touched my hand and drew me closer. Father, this is David. So, you are the mortal who has captured my Alone's heart. I couldn't answer. I couldn't speak underwater as they could. And now I knew the difference between us. I knew what Alane meant about her father and her world. I don't expect words from you, mortal man. But now you know. I agreed to this meeting to prove to you and to Alanae that a union between you is utterly impossible. Oh, but, Father, David can learn to live here as we do. In your kingdom, nothing is impossible if you will it. You permitted me to venture on the beach. Yes, to see it, to learn of it, but never to make an alliance with it. But when you agreed to meet David, I thought... I you... told you why I agreed to let him come here. I didn't have to go to the trouble. But I wanted you to see what happens to a mortal man in our kingdom. As he spoke, my air began to give out. I'd switched to the auxiliary tank much earlier, and now I was down to the danger level. I had to get to the surface. Alone, look at your mortal man. Already his air is used up. It is finished. Father, Father, you mustn't. Let me take him back. No, it is finished. Let him go, Father. I promise I'll forget him. Don't let him die. What difference should it make to you? Father, please, let me take him back. You stay, Alone. I will permit Ikhtar to show him the way. But hurry, hurry. <laughs> darling. I thought I thought I was dying. My air gave out. You almost drowned. How did I how did I get here? Well, some people on the beach dragged you out of the water that they saved your life. I can't remember. They said some kind of giant fish pushed you to shore. Oh, David, do you want anything? A tea or water? A double scotch. Oh, 
No, the doctor said no, no, for 48 hours. You, you've had a sedative. Oh, you wouldn't believe what I've been through. I followed Alanay to the depths of the sea, to Neptune's kingdom. I was there. I saw it. I met her father. David! I know, I know. You, you think I'm crazy, but she took me there to see if I could live in her world. Her world at the bottom of the sea. Oh, well, what was her father like? Half man, half fish. He, he sat on a coral throne. What am I saying? I can't believe it. David, hallucinations are common with No, no, no. This was not uh, an hallucination. I was there. It happened. Darling, as soon as you can travel, we're going back to Dallas. I knew I'd never see Alanay again. And I was tired of diving. So two days later, we flew back to Texas. Helen wanted to stay and nurse me, but I persuaded her I wanted to be alone for a while. Dad was in Europe, and only our housekeeper, Mrs. MacArthur, was there. And, of course, Napoleon. How's the boy, Napoleon? Huh? <laughs> Nappy, Napoleon, get down. Yeah, you're glad to see me, aren't you, Nappy? Yeah, I was worried sick about you after Ellen called. And I wish she hadn't. No, I'm glad Dad's in Europe. You're sure you're all right? Well, would I be here if I weren't? Now, why don't you go up and take a nice hot tub and not put your things away? Okay. Sounds good. Come on, Napoleon. It's always good when you come home, David. Hello? David? Oh. Uh, hi, Ellen. Oh, I thought you were going to call me yesterday. I'm sorry. I, uh, I stayed over in the city. And what were you doing in town? No, I was checking out a new hunting rifle. Well, whatever. We're still going to the theater tomorrow? Oh, uh, yes, yes, of course. I'm, I've got the tickets. Don't lose them. What was that? Oh, never mind. Okay, I'll, I'll pick you up for dinner tomorrow. No need. I'll stop by. I found a painting at the town gallery that's perfect for your foyer. I'm dying to see how it looks, and we'll go on from there. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Don't you agree, David? Just the thing for the foyer. Mm, I guess so. Oh, you don't sound overwhelmed. No, maybe I'm not. David, is it me? Oh, no. Uh, no, no, Ellen. Then, then what is it? Is it that girl in Laguna? Did she mean so much to you? Well, I think about her, yes. But that's over. It's over completely. I'm not even sure it ever was. Oh, well, I'm glad for that. Oh, come on, let's go. Oh, I do hope Armand has lobster tonight. I'm dying for some really good lobster. Oh, I wonder what ails Napoleon. He's such a nuisance sometimes. Ellen, uh, wait a minute. Hmm? What is it? I thought I just saw a figure at the end of the path. It uh, slipped into the shadows. Mrs. MacArthur? Oh, no, 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 no way. It was much too small. Then it's a prowler. All right, look, I'll handle this. You stay here. I'm staying with you. Napoleon has stopped barking. Well, then maybe it's nothing. Hello? hello? Who's there? I saw you. Well, let's get to the car, David. Look, if there's someone here, I've got... To... Wait a minute. Oh, what is it? It's a puddle of water in the path. Well, maybe the gardener. Charles didn't water here today. Everything else is dry except that one patch of water. It hasn't rained for three days. Well, what about it? Well, why would there be one spot of wet ground when everything else is dry? A search of the grounds turned up nothing. Ellen and I had our dinner, went to the theater, and I took her home. As I walked from my garage to the house, I saw a figure slip from the shadows. powers. As his daughter, I have been given certain birthrights. Powers to do what may seem impossible to you. And so I'm here. Oh, I, I hope you're glad to see me, David. Oh, I'm, 
I'm overwhelmed. Oh, I saw you going out with her earlier tonight. That's why I disappeared. That was you in the shadows? Yes. I couldn't approach you when you were with her. Oh, forget her. You're here, and that's all that matters. Oh. You can live in my world. Oh, I know I can, David. I'll learn. You see, I can live out of water. All I need to learn is how to please you. She's a charming child, David. But it bothers me that she followed you from Laguna. Nice girls don't do that. What about her parents? Well, she only has a father. And Ellen? Does she know she's here? No. And I don't want her to know. Not now, anyway. Well, it's not going to be easy. Hmm. Well, David, it's your life, and you do what you want with it. I love her, Mrs. MacArthur. We both know it, and we know it's right. I didn't tell Mrs. MacArthur all I knew about Alan A. She wasn't ready for that. And I wasn't sure I was either. I kept thinking back to that incredible meeting with her father. A meeting I knew was real. Uh, I knew you wanted me, David. I wouldn't have come to you if you didn't. I want you, Alan A. Completely. Uh, you told her? No, not yet. Oh, I'm so happy, David. So happy. But so... So uneasy. Uneasy? <laughs> Why? For defying my father. I just hope... Hope what? That... He understands. I broke off with Ellen, who wasn't happy about it, but wasn't too surprised either. The weeks rolled by, and Alan and I fell deeper in love than ever. It was magic. A magic I never knew or dreamed about. And then, it began. A shadow of terror to spoil our paradise. It was late autumn now, and one Friday night, we had all gone to bed early. The clock said 2 a.m. when I awoke like a shot. A sound had sliced through my subconscious. I jumped out of bed and raced to the hall. David, what's the matter? It's Napoleon, Mrs. MacArthur. He's fighting with someone. Fighting? Yes, I'm going to find out. Now, you stay here. No, no, no. Let me come with you. I raised Napoleon. I can help. Come along, then. Hurry! The sounds came from the gazebo. Stop. Does that mean... Oh, no. <gasps> Napoleon. Oh. He's soaking wet. Napoleon. He did, David. Turn apart. Who could have done this? Why? Oh, he's soaking wet. Napoleon. No, I wouldn't touch him, David. Mrs. MacArthur. Look. Look here on his fur. Oh, those white flakes. Yes. They're fish scales. The fur smells of salt water. Salt water, David? In the middle of Texas? waters of the world cover more than 70% of the Earth's surface. Little wonder that the power of the sea can make itself felt far inland from the sparkling beaches. But what effect will it have on the lives of David Wells and the child of the sea, Alone? What killed Napoleon and left him soaked with salt water? We'll learn the chilling answers when I return shortly with Act Three. the sea has reached out to touch David Wells' life again. His dog, Napoleon, killed by an unseen force that left the animal soaked in seawater and covered in scales. With things like this happening, I wonder what's in store for David and Alame. David, whoever did this must still be on the ground. Well, let's get back to the house fast. I'll take care of Napoleon later. I want you and Alame to stay inside. What are you going to do? Get my gun. I think we should call the police. No, don't do that right now. But you keep Alan A inside if you can. David, David. Alan A. 
on, Hank. Get back to the house. I told you. Oh, David, thank God you're all right. He won't hurt you if I'm with you. Go back with Mrs. McCarthy. But you must come with me now. I'm your only protection. What do you mean? He's after me. Oh, he won't hurt me, but he'll kill anything that threatens him. That's why Napoleon... Oh, Father, oh, I'll see you, Alan, eh? From the shadows stepped a man covered in a robe. The robe was torn and bloodied. The face was hidden deep inside the hood of the robe, but the chill that ran down my back, it was the man fish that had carried me out of Alanay's underwater home. Your father wants you back, Alanay. I have found a new power. Now, now look here. Let me, David. Tell my father that I am staying here, Issa. She's staying with me. I have not come all this way to turn around and leave. You're coming with me. Stay back. Don't touch her. That weapon doesn't threaten me. I said don't touch her. David, don't. <gasps> Can't you realize these bullets mean nothing to me? Mortal man. You were always my friend, Ixar. Why are you doing this? We miss you, Alune. I miss you. You are not a child of the land, no matter what you think or say about love. Oh, let me stay. Tell my father you couldn't find me. I can only tell him you refuse to return. But he'll punish you for not taking me back by force. No, he won't. But if you insist on this way, then you'll have to take the punishment he plans for you. He cannot punish me here. Perhaps you'll have to find out for yourself. I'll give your father your message. Thank you, Ixar. You're thanking me for nothing. You know if your father wants you back, he'll get you back. David, I tried to stop her. It's all right, Mrs. MacArthur. We're okay. Well, I still think we ought to call the police. There may be a maniac on the loose. What he did to poor Napoleon. Oh, no, it was probably another dog. But the seawater. It's over, Mrs. MacArthur. Forget it. Forget it? How can I forget what happened tonight? Well, there's no more danger. They've taken care of Napoleon's body. Let's not have any more about it. All right, David. If you say so. I couldn't tell Mrs. MacArthur the truth. How could I tell her what had happened that night? I decided that Alan a and I should be married as soon as possible. I knew the family would never stand for an elopement, so I called Aunt Lou and asked her to come to Dallas. Of course I'll arrange the wedding, David. I'm delighted to be asked. Don't make it too fancy. Just invite those you think are a must. Oh, but you've told your father. Yes, we called him in South America. <laughs> I've got to admit I'm surprised. Are you sure this is what you want? Absolutely. But following you here from Laguna, and and what about her father? Aunt Lou, remember what I told you about my visit to her father? Where I'd been, what I'd seen? Uh, well, yes, we talked about mm, it. And you thought that it was a hallucination. Well, that was real, Aunt Lou. As real as Alan a is. And now her father's trying to get her back. He, he's been here? Uh, he sent a messenger. The same one who brought me ashore that day. David, are you asking me to believe this girl is actually from the sea? Yes. May I come in? Oh, Alan, hey. of course. Mrs. MacArthur told me you arrived, Aunt Lou. I'm so happy to see you again. Hello, Alan. Hey. It seems we have some important plans to make. Oh, yes. It's so nice of you to arrange it all. My family couldn't possibly do it. Yes, so I understand. We'll leave uh, everything to you. What's the matter, Alan? Water. Water. Get water. Sit up. Put your arms over your head. Water. I must have... Aunt, Aunt Lou, help me. Water. Tub. David, water. Aunt Lou, quick. Tub. Fill the tub as fast as you can. That tub, David. Do as I say. I'll do it, but I, I don't see how that's going help to help. me, David. Water. Look. Water. I'll carry you. Here. Put your arm around my neck. Now, now I know how you help. Why, stop talking. Oh, the poor girl needs a doctor. I'll call Dr. Lewis. Hey, Lou, just stand back and don't try to interfere. 
It's half full, that way. Do you want to start in? Yes. Jacob, down you go. Oh, David, no. What are you doing? David. Stand back. Oh, she's all right now. She can breathe now. She's underwater. She... She breathes underwater. Cup is full enough now. Alan is all right now. For a while. Uh, David. Aunt Lou. Oh. floated face down on the tub. The slight movement of her back told me she was breathing easily. And I knew that her father was keeping his word. He'd have Alan back. And I was powerless to fight him. I think I, I'm all right. You better stay under a little longer. I want to see if I can... Yes. I can breathe in the air. David, if I was right, my father is stronger than I am. He won't let us be together. I didn't want to believe it, but I knew Alan A. was right. The breathing attack was her father's spell, drawing her back to the sea. We both knew the attacks would continue, and... Alan A. might possibly die. I must go back, David. We tried, but it's not for us. I know. I'll take you to Laguna. That's not necessary. The gulf is closer. I'll slip in there. The entire sea is my home. It doesn't matter. No, I want to say goodbye to you where I first met you. We'll go to Laguna. It was a dark, gray day. Alan A. and I walked to the ocean and stood on the large rock we'd shared so many happy times before. This isn't goodbye. Every time you're near the sea, we'll be together. This is the test, David. If our love is really strong, nothing can keep us apart. Maybe our future is just beginning. Alan A., don't go. We'll work something out. Special pools for you or something. David, I must. They're waiting for me. I can feel the forces now. But our love will win. You'll see, David. You'll know when the time comes. Alan, I... You'll know, David. You'll know when the time comes. Hello. Oh, pretty good, Aunt Lou. You want your house back? Oh, not exactly. I've got to be on the coast next week for an art exhibit in L.A., and I'll be using the cottage. Well, come on along. Seeing you'll be like the first breeze of summer. Well, I'll be there on Sunday. Oh, your father's back from South America. Oh? Delighted you're not engaged anymore and convinced more than ever you're crazy. <laughs> well, come on out and give me more laughs, huh? The past week has been like a wake. Oh. You miss her very much, David. Completely. But like everything else, I'll get over it. You want to come into L.A. with me tomorrow? I can't promise a swinging time at the art show, but there's a cocktail reception afterward. Could be fun. Yeah, well, maybe I, maybe I will. I'll, I'll see. It wouldn't hurt to get out again. Oh. Hope I'm not uh, wearing out uh, wearing out my welcome. Oh, never! I'm just not ready to go back to Dallas yet. David, what's the matter? Short of breath, all of a sudden. Oh, something. it's probably nerves. You've been under such a strain. Don't I? Don't I know it? Maybe going into L.A. with you is just what I need. What is it? I can't breathe. Water. I need you water. Sit up, David. No water. What's that water? I'll get it, David. I'll call Dr. Harris. What? Water. I knew what was happening. I staggered toward the bedroom door, through the living room, and onto the beach. 
I have to get to the water. Cold sand on a black, starry night. Have to get to the water. Only a few feet now. Into the surf. The gentle rollers welcome me. Carry me deep into the sea. And I breathe easily again. Great, refreshing gulps as I swim with a light, easy sway to the kingdom where my love is waiting. The iridescent fish beckon and lead the way. Alane is waiting with love. As I approach the gates, the underwater flowers sway in greeting. The gates swing open and I swim into that kingdom, that new world. that the force of love, the power of the gods, and the mysteries of the sea are not eternal, are not real. Our story was fantasy, you say? Perhaps, but the next time you're near a beach, look out to sea. If you look closely, you may see two figures swimming and frolicking in the waters. Porpoises, probably, but uh, then again, I'll be back shortly. Hey there, fellas. How y'all? Morning, Sheriff. Nice to see you, Sheriff. Hey, howdy, Sheriff. <laughs> hey, I ain't seen much of you boss on the highway lately. Y'all ain't been changing routes to avoid me now. Not me, Sheriff. No Ooh, way, Sheriff. Don't no way, Sheriff. Uh-huh. See, I hear tell a lot of you 18 wheelers on them uh, Johnson CB radios. Uh, you mean the new 40-channel Johnson CBs with tapered automatic noise limiters? And dual crystal filtering? Yeah, and that nifty new power bar LED meter? Electronic speech compression? With Johnson's new range control? Yeah, and their X300D phase lock loop frequency synthesizer? Nope, Sheriff. None of us truckers ever heard of them new Johnson CBs. <laughs> Till you mentioned it just now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, when a trucker hits the road with his Johnson CB, he knows he's got a lot going for him. Why, in a recent survey, 66% more independent truck drivers own an American-made Johnson CB than the next leading brand. Now, which CB is best for y'all? Go with Johnson CB. Clearly the professional's choice. Stand for Sheriff. Oh, FCC license required. <laughs> it's free, too. Yeah. yeah. we came up for air. And anyway, David and Alan, they certainly don't want us around anymore. Two's company and three is certainly not a honeymoon. I suspect that a marriage ceremony in that mysterious and beautiful kingdom of the sea is something spectacular to behold. And the honeymoon. Well, we'll just have to use our imaginations. Our cast included Tony Roberts, E.V. Juster, Bryna Rayburn, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.